Oui, oui. Et je pas les pour. Yeah. UFC predictions for the Paris card. Uh, Serial Gun. Wow, you Sergio really Gaspar. wanted to get that one out there, didn't you? Yes. The oui, oui. The, the Philippe ou, you know? You know? Bienvenue. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's start with uh, Morgan Charien versus Manolo Zaccini. Um, this Morgan is a very big uh, Cage Warriors champ. Everyone kind of already knows him going into the UFC, and he is a very big favorite in this fight, um, which says a lot to his striking. People need to not doubt Zakini though. He can very much win this fight because Morgan likes to drop his hands very frequently when he, he, he is on the back foot. So if Manolo can get through with the combinations, you could see a finish and an upset. But I do think the technical side of Morgan will win this fight for him. As long as he isn't as patient as he is in some of his fights, he could get the win. Yeah, I mean, that, that sounds about right. I was pretty much on the same wavelength. Um, I do want to go with the underdog here. And just before we gloss over it, Singapore card, I was right. I beat Santi in the overall picks. I'm going to put him right there, there, wherever I put him. But. Hey, you do the editing, so if you want to put my socials right here. Not and- doing that. <laughs> Regardless, um, yeah, I think I think Manolo can catch him slipping, and I'm kind of hoping for that, to be honest. But, I mean, going with the upset, it's tough, especially on an undercard, but that's what we're rocking with. Yeah, Morgan is definitely a, a very big prospect to watch if he does, if he stops being so tentative. He, he is on the back foot 90% of the fight, and he kind of waits for this counter shot for it to come and sometimes it might not ever come so morgan can definitely if he fine-tunes some things can definitely be a problem in this 145 division but we're gonna move on to no time vulcan uzdemir if you want to call him that anymore uh against bogdan gustav um if you look at bogdan's record you have like his first five fights against like zero and zero guys like he has really not fought any sort of competition but the reason why he's on the main card and he's against someone like Vulcan is because this guy knocks people out with his jab. And he is a scary looking human being. I mean, it seriously looks like he could kill someone and I would perfectly believe it. He looks like Seven, uh, the, the the villain from Seven, the movie Seven. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> but he hasn't fought anyone as talented as who Vulcan is, but is Vulcan out the door because... His last, he's three and three, I'm pretty sure, in his last six. And if it's MMA, if it's an MMA fight, Vulcan really does not know what to do. Against Paul Craig, he all, all he had to worry was the takedowns, and he looked good. But against Nikita Krylov, he looked slow. He looked like he didn't know what to do in there. So Vulcan is only 33, and he still maybe has that power that, you know, got him to a title shot. But. I can't tell if he's there or not, you know? So, I'm coming in very heavy about this fight. Bogdan has not faced any fucking competition. And I'm saying that right now. He looks great because he's fighting fucking mailmen. I mean, honestly, you look back the fights, man. I mean, yes, he's dropping people with a jab. I will say, I'm very excited to see him fight in the UFC. He's a very, very fun person, knockout artist, whatever you call it. But we're not going to sleep on Vulcan. I mean, you look at this guy's losses. DC, Dominic Reyes, Ankalev, Krylov. I mean, top fucking guys in this division. Like, for me, I think Vulcan takes it. Um, Their levels, obviously, their levels in UFC, and he's going to show it. But look, man... I think Bogdan's fighting scrubs, and until I see it in the UFC, I'm not going to back him. Yeah, going with my point of how Vulcan has fought these high-level guys, but it's just like, the big question is, is he there? Do I think he's going to be there? Yes. I don't think you're going to, I don't think Vulcan loses to a guy at the caliber of Bogdan due to the competition that he's faced. I mean, these are yeah. world-class guys. Maybe some are, like, out the door now, like Dominic Reyes, but Dominic Reyes at the time was world-class. But yeah. Yeah. 
Bogdan hasn't fought anyone there. And it's not like this guy's some undefeated Don. He's lost two fights in these low competition uh, matches. I am going with Vulcan as well. Uh, I just hope that, you know, you do get a fun fight where maybe Vulcan gets dropped and then you're like, oh my God, I'm eating my words. And then Vulcan ends up winning, you know? Yeah. Um, but the fact that Vulcan's only minus 180 te- it tells you a lot of Bogdan's power. So that is a mm-hmm. very big scare. And we're going to do this fight because it is a weird one. It's on the main card on certain sites and it's not. So I'm going to do it because I love him. We're going to do William Gomez versus Giannis Gamori. I believe that's how you say it. And I'm yeah. going with my boy, <laughs> William Gomez. Why do I say that? I think his back foot striking and him against the cage will actually cause a lot of issues against Giannis, who does like doing the very stationary tie stance and the marching down. You might be a very open target for Gomez who can throw those teeps, throw that long range striking. He is a very weird build for this 145. He's six foot, 73 inch reach, and he uses all of that reach. So I do think... Gomez on the back foot will lead to either a decision or if Giannis gets so frustrated and starts wailing himself forward, does get a KO in it. I don't agree with the KO. I do agree that his reach and his teeps and his his long range like boxing, whatever you want to call it, is outstanding. But this man has gone to decision every single time in the UFC so far. Like we're not gonna we're not gonna sit here and think that this man's lighting people out. I think I think there's a chance that Yanni subsets, and as much as I like Gomis and as much as I like that long kind of you know battle, um, I think I'm gonna go with Yanni's. It is a very close fight, and um, both of these guys were not supposed to fight each other in like two days ago. Uh, I believe this fight was made on Tuesday. Uh, William Gomez was supposed to fight Lucas Almeida and Giannis was supposed to fight Colin Logren. Both of them pulled out and they're like, you want to know what? Giannis, you don't have to cut weight. Go to 145 and fight William. And I, I'm going to go with my boy. I'm going to, I'm going to do a little Paul and he's definitely going to win this fight in my opinion. Um, but Giannis is a very talented guy and I'm very interested to see what a full camp of, uh, against an opponent will do for him. Um, Then we got this one, which I think a lot of people are really sleeping on Tiago Moises against Benal Saint-Denis. Tiago is a guy that has been against these top-level guys. His big issue is volume. You know, he only throws a couple strikes and doesn't really throw anything that's too crazy. His BJJ is mainly his his main avenue to winning. And Saint-Denis, his last three have been absolutely insane. The Bonfim fight, everyone thought the Bonfim brothers were going to come out crazy. Next thing you know, the the younger brother loses to Santani very quickly. Santani gets the takedown and does the ground and pound, but against a guy like Thiago Moises, I don't think that's a very good place to be. To be on top and to wail the way that he does, I do see Thiago Moises winning this by a submission. So I have this fight very close with Moises obviously having the advantage on the ground. But there's one thing you're not factoring in. It is in Paris. In saying that, give me Saint Denis. I mean, I, I think it's <laughs> I think it's I think it's close enough to where that that doesn't matter. I think it's close enough to where if it gets into it, look man, you you talk about going to Brazil, fighting these Brazilians, going to uh, London fighting these scouses, you know what I mean? Like, give me was you say Benoit? Is that how you say it? Benoit? It's How ben, you say it? Benoit Saint Denis. Yep, give me him. <laughs> so, so Andy's reasoning is we're in France as to why Benoit wins. Benoit oui. is we oui. ah yes. Um, Benoit is a very tough motherfucker. I mean, his loss that fight could have been stopped. And that ref, I'm pretty sure, got fired um, after it. But I'm going with Tiago due to the competition. This guy's only lost to, like, real real tough motherfuckers. And I don't think Benoit is to the caliber Mm -hmm. of Tiago. But according to Andy, they're in France. So anything could happen. I want to see what you're going to say about this one. Are they in France 
because we got Manoa Furat versus Rose Nama Yunez. I want to hear you start talking about, oh, we're in France. Let me hear it. All right. So we're in France, right? So naturally, oui, naturally, oui. naturally you get a boost, right? Oui, oui. But you know what beats? <laughs> you know what beats a location boost? Okay. Heart and mental awareness. <laughs> Give me Rose. <laughs> Give me Rose all day. I know the weight difference. I know she's coming off a loss. She's never lost back-to-back fights. She's always come back. I mean, we're talking about Rose here. The reason why she lost that last fight is because her corner was fucking idiots. Oh, you're winning the fight. You're winning the fight. Don't worry. You're winning the fight. As a fighter, obviously, you're going to go with the game plan. If the game plan is to stick back and just count on your jab and to circle, 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 obviously, that's what the fight's going to be. And that's why it was a boring-ass fight. That's why Carla Suarez just took it to her. Like, I think Rose comes back. I think not only does she come back, she comes back with a boom because she always does. I think mentally she's in a better spot to where she's like, okay, now I know to pick it up myself. I don't have to worry about, you know, my corner and stuff like that. But she's not fighting a scrub. So it, I think it's going to be a close fight. But I think anytime you get Rose as plus money, give me it. Give me it all day. And I will say it's not Trevor Whitman's fault. It is that weirdo Pat Barry was telling Rose you're winning this fight, blah, blah, blah. She wasn't winning. No one was winning that fight. No it was, one, bro. It's that, that reign of Carla Esparza might be the worst title reign we've ever seen. She won it. She won it in one of the most boring ways possible and then lost it basically right after and very oh, yeah. easily against Zhang Weili. Um, I don't know what Rose is coming in with. In terms of mentally and what she is, Rose, on a good day, on the best day, is the best women's fighter of all time. On her best day. Her best days don't come unless she is mentally there. And I was listening to her on the Hawani show, kind of, you know, rambling, not really, not really specifying of anything about this fight. I do think Manon can outmuscle her, can outpower her with the jab, the sidekick that she's very well known for. I do see a world where Rose does try to get a takedown in this. And if she does get it, I think Rose wins it. If not, I I do see the height, the weight, all of that. Manon, Manon is a big ass girl to get to 125. And um I do see Manon winning it if Rose isn't mentally there. Um, it, it's sad because I do think Rose is one of the best women's fighters we've ever seen on a good day, but is that good day going to happen? Not with that fuckhead Pat Barry in her corner. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Facts, <laughs> I'll bro. tell you that. Jesus. And let's not go into the creepy levels of him. Let's just go to the main event. Yeah. Um, don't even get me started on that guy, <laughs> man. Surogan against Sergei Spivak. Um... This is a recency biased. I will say this. People see Surreal and how he got manhandled by John Jones. No one really saw that guillotine out of nowhere. And Sergei Spivak has been wrestling people her, his last three. I'm still going to go with Surreal Gan. Surreal Gan is one of the most talented heavyweights we've ever seen. And his law, lone losses is Francis Ngannou, who is not even a human, and John Bones Jones, like, he's not to the caliber of those two, but he's definitely to the caliber of Sergey. Sergey has very good wrestling. He's very he's very heavy on top, but I do see Surreal defending it and picking him apart. And the power I think of Surreal's kicks, the the jab, is gonna really halt Spivak, and you're gonna see a. Tom Aspinall, Sergey Spivak 2.0 with a uh, elongated time. I do think Tom Aspinall got it done very quickly. I don't think it's going to be that quick, but I do think Sergey, um, sorry, Surreal is going to pick him apart and end up getting a finish in the third or fourth round. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly where I'm at with it. I mean, again, recency bias. You're talking about a dude that mentally came into the John Jones camp just like, 
I mean, dude's playing FIFA, like chilling, going out to here, he there. Not yeah. no, like he he lost the fight before he even stepped in the octagon. And John knew he that. said he was That's scared. Why. I remember he was saying he was scared before the fight. He was like, "I'm it, I'm not ready for a guy like this." Blah blah blah. And then like first like oblique kick or no no first jab of John Jones in the heavyweights, Sergey just jumps back. Like he was gonna do a step back three. He jumps. Like the 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 scariness of John Jones, I think, really won him that fight. Yeah, I mean, it reminds me of the GSP Matt Hughes. You know what I mean? Like, you, when when you see someone that you've idolized for so long, or someone that has just run through the division, you fight them. You're like, oh my god! Like, I don't know if I'm good oh enough. My god. I'm fighting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's like, give me surreal gun. I mean, I think that. We're talking about one of the better distance management fighters in that whole division, and if not the whole UFC. I think he stops the takedowns. Given if he gets taken down, it's looking fucking bad. Uh, but I will say, Sirogan, I think, does very good distancing. I think that he's going to use that to his advantage, and he's going to. He, I don't know if he's going to get a stoppage, but it might be a surreal five round kind of, you know, clear winner fight. And Gan is, like, very silky off his back. I mean, he does have these really weird submissions that he somehow pulls out of uh, out of his ass. But I still don't think the takedown's going to be there. Um, a little fun fact, I'm pretty sure Tom Aspinall is going to be there. And I would love to see him fight the winner of this fight. And then after that, fights John Jones. John Jones... The reason why I'm saying John Jones and not the winner of John Jones Stipe is because John Jones is gonna kick Stipe's ass. Stipe is like 41 now, and John Jones doesn't look like he's stopping anytime soon. So, um, I would love to see the winner of this fight, Tom Aspinall, and I cannot. I don't know where that fight is gonna be. Is it gonna be in London? If if um, Cyril Gan wins it, is it gonna be in France? Um, are they just gonna meet the in the middle, like in Belgium or some shit? I don't know. Um, some notable prelims, everyone should be watching at this Angelosa and Reese McKee fight. Reese McKee is the the guy known for Chamayev absolutely whipping his ass, but he's back, and he's going to fight Losa, and that fight is going to be a barn burner. That's going to be a super fun fight, and um, overall, this card has very good potential to be, you know, the London-type card that uh, we should have gotten before. Um, yeah, I... I overall am going to watch this. It's not, it's kind of in the middle of what I was saying. It's like 12 30 p.m. to like 3 p.m. You know, I didn't have to wake up. At, I woke up at 6 a.m., guys, and I watched <laughs> through and through the whole Singapore card. Thank God it was a fun one. But, um, yeah. It's been studs. Wee wee. Nibu. Numu numu. Yee.